Good evening, everyone. How is the Tonal family doing tonight? I'm coming to you live from Maine. Um, and I'm out on a sun porch, and the sun is going down very quickly. So we might get some, uh, we might see some shadows, but we're gonna. It's okay. We've got a great guest tonight. I'm very excited to introduce him. But before we do that, I'm gonna give people a few moments to join. Hello, hello. I see you trickling in. And we're going to mark this as an announcement. There we go. So say hello so I know we've got some people. Make sure you can hear me. Um, I'll give you a couple updates while uh, some people are joining in. Some new content this week that's really, really cool. Our first golf workout, uh, Paul released called Above Par. So check that out. It's in the Coaches from Home section. We have our first meditation out with Coach Jared. That is called Intentional Breathing. He also came out with a cool down and restore workout. So if you do your own custom workout or um, maybe you create a, your, a workout and free lift and you just want to add some cool down moves at the end, that's a great one. We also have advanced metabolic arms, which I saw Morgan do today, and she was dying after it. So that one looks pretty tough. That's with Coach Liz. We have Coach Nicolette's ab, quick ab burner, which she shared this workout in the community uh, a few weeks or months. It was a while ago. It was about a month or two ago, um, and people loved it. So we turned it into a workout. I did it today. It is killer. It reminds me of like a core punch light but it was still super tough. So try that out. That's a great one to tack on to workouts or maybe do on your off day. Um, I think I got them all. Yeah, hello everyone. Thank you for joining in. Let me see, I'm trying to pull up your comments. Alrighty, let's see Karen. Hi Morgan, alrighty. So my guest tonight, uh, he's nothing short of an inspiration. I know you're going to love him. His name is Jerome Snell. He'll be joining us from San Diego, California, where he lives with his wife, Erin, his two daughters, and their Labradoodle, Kava. I love that name. You might recognize him from a post he shared in the official tonal community a few weeks ago. Um, and he, in this post, that might actually be our most liked post in the community ever. I'm going to have to fact check that. But uh, it, it got a lot of uh, recognition, duly noted recognition. Um, and it's about how he went from being bedridden, struggling to fight cancer for three months, to being the strongest he's felt physically and mentally um, after cancer with Tonal. So I'm very excited and honored to be sharing his story with you tonight, his story of strength and perseverance. He's an incredible guy. Um, so please help me welcome Jerome to Tonal Talk. Here we go. Hi, Jerome. Hi, Kate. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. How are you? I'm good. It just started pouring. So oh, no. <laughs> I hope you guys don't hear that. But <laughs> it's definitely starting to pour here. <laughs> and we're still uh, a few hours at, at, <clears throat> behind you. So I still got yeah. some skin here. Yeah. 8 p.m. I might fall asleep by the end, but that's OK. It's going to be past my <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, as soon as I saw your post, I was like, we've got to talk to him. This is an incredible story. The photos are just, they say a thousand words. And so I knew that this, the community would love to hear your story of strength. So um, let's get right to it. Can you please tell us about your journey with cancer, how it started, what your diagnosis was like? Oh boy, can you guys hear that? It's getting loud. <laughs> All right. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, it's kind of crazy. It was back in August of last year, but, you know, it, it feels like yesterday that I got the, the call from uh, the doctor um, that I unfortunately had a positive positive diagnosis for, for head and neck cancer. Um, I remember in that first week was absolutely I mean, the first week, regardless of the treatment uh, program, that was incredibly miserable. Uh, to say the least, I'll tell you more about that. But that first week was the absolute worst because, you know, I, I, I the doctor called me. I remember it clear as day. I was working on a, a budget deck for a presentation on Monday. And once I got that call, of course, I just couldn't think about anything. But and, um, you know, my, my first thought, not knowing much of anything about cancer was how long do I have to live? Just just thinking this is this is it. And, uh, you know, just I'm getting a little choked up about it now, but being, you know, scared to death that not being able to see my, my daughters grow up, you know, not not being around and just awful feeling. And, and I didn't know anything. It was a it was a solid week. It was a pretty much a Friday to a Friday till I saw my um, 
oncologist for the first time. And I'd had a- That was when you got diagnosed to, to what was that week gap you, you were getting screened? You didn't know you had it yet? No, so yeah, the, the first Friday was my ENT calling me because it was a head and neck cancer. I went in originally um, because I saw a little lump, mm -hmm. a pea-sized bulge in my neck, not knowing what it is. So went to have that uh, checked out, um, went through um, an MRI and biopsy. And then it was the next day after that biopsy appointment um, which was no picnic that uh, he, he called with the, the diagnosis. So it was a week later than that I saw the, the oncologist. Yeah. And uh, in that week, I had no idea if, if uh, the cancer had metastasized, which, you know, that's that's the critical piece in, in fighting any cancer um, is ensuring is trying to catch it early. And luckily for, for me, it was caught early. And I found out a week later that it uh, it had metastasized. And, and to get the happy ending out um, first, and I'll come back to one of the story, but um, obviously I'm still here, but uh, I have since had uh, um, another full body PET scan and just got the results of that um, at the end of June. And so right now I'm, I'm cancer free and, and doing great. So Amazing. yeah, fantastic. I think that's the first thing is that clearly cancer is, is, is not a death sentence um, for everybody. It's obviously very serious. Um, but um, another, another piece I want to mention is kind of my PSA for, for this talk is um, when I got diagnosed, um, and we told family, obviously, told close friends. I didn't make any, any major broadcast, kept it off a uh, 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 Facebook. Um, but after telling friends, I had a, a close friend, a neighbor that I was speaking with a couple of days after the diagnosis. He was asking me more about it, obviously. And, I said, you know, man, I've I, I've had this lump in my neck, and you know, it's I've never done anything about it. Just kind of sat on it. It's been six months. And I'm like, man, you should go get it checked out. I mean, for me, I just saw this weird thing here, but then the the doctor saw a larger lump that was extended under the skin, which I never would have seen unless this thing popped up. But to make a long story short, he went into his doctor, and horribly coincidental, he also had cancer. The same. Um, no, different type of cancer, but um, he still had to go through a, a similar treatment re regime that, that I did. Thankfully, he's, uh, he's now also um, uh, cancer free. He was uh, about two weeks behind me. Well, I'm uh, so glad you are both here. Were you both able to kind of go through it together at least? We were, but it was a different type of cancer. So it was the treatment was different. Yeah. In any cancer, there's um, kind of three modalities, surgery, chemo and radiation. For me, there was no surgery. Radiation was the primary, which um, uh, for him, surgery was the primary. Um, they couldn't do surgery on mine because, uh, and he actually, he had no chemo, whereas I did have chemo. Mm -hmm. um, they couldn't do surgery on mine because they weren't able to cut it out of, of where it was. It would have done, potentially done some damage to those areas. And um, so I went through, my treatment plan consisted of, it was seven weeks long. And it consisted of daily or Monday to Friday radiation treatments and then weekly uh, chemo treatments. And yeah, it was it was pretty, pretty horrendous. The um, the chemo, though, I think a lot of people hear about chemo and think that's that's the worst. For me, it wasn't. It was really the radiation. The chemo was just coming in in order to prep the cells um to make them less defensive to uh the radiation so radiation basically cooks breaks down the the cancer cells unfortunately also healthy cells which is why you got really sick and you saw in the picture i pretty much was lying around all day um and it's really the cumulative effect that just destroys you i mean i i lost uh 30 pounds i'm six foot one and, and went from about 190 to to 160 um wow. during the treatment um, I'm sure you were almost unrecognizable. Yeah, I had to get uh, a lot of new clothes. That's for yeah. sure, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad thing. And were you <laughs> were you able to do any of your daily normal daily activities, or were you not working, kind of not hanging out with the kids, like just recovering? no? I was I was doing nothing. It's kind of um, I heard it described well that uh, I didn't say this, but I think it's very true. It was I was living near my family as opposed to with my family at that point. I mean, I would I would get up um, and just sit on the couch. I remember multiple times I'd watch, I was, I was on so many drugs. I had a fent uh, fentanyl patch, a uh, series of other painkillers, and they, they kept 
you know, the pain down. I still had pain, but they, they, they kept it manageable. But the side effect, of course, is I was just you know, exhausted all the time. So I moved from bed to the couch and uh, fall asleep, basically. So I was probably sleeping 12 to 16 hours a day. You know, wow. every day. It was it was kind of crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a really tough treatment going in um, every day and, and then pour out. The, the radiation was only about 15 minutes. Um, when you're actually, once you're actually there and strapped to the table. Um, but the chemo was, was about four hours. So it was pretty much an all day affair with, with the radiation. And don't and you, I, didn't you bring something to show us? I did. I was just about to grab that. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, this is like, a, you're about to see a scene out of the man in the iron mask, although it's a plastic mask. Um, so during my treatments, basically radiation machine is this huge, machine with a, a gun that rotates around you and points to where it needs to shoot the radiation. It, it's quite uh, high tech in terms of how, um, how, how fine they can define the target mm -hmm. of where they're shooting the radiation. But of course, you know, if you're lying on a table. I'm not going to lie completely still. Nobody really can. So they have to strap you down. And I got this very beautiful mask made for me that, uh, <laughs> Basically, you can see these black bolts here that strapped to the table behind me wow. and just kept me like completely immovable on a hard table below as the, the radiation gun went around me and, and shot the radiation where it needed to go. That is terrifying. I can't imagine having to do that every day or five days a week for seven weeks. Right? Yeah, it was a bit, you know, the worst part about it, because you got kind of got used to it. The worst part about it was when they made the mask. Because it's uh, you can't really tell from from looking at it on video, but when they started, it was kind of like a, a cast material mm. where, and so they basically had to press it down over my face, and so it was really it was wet and smashing down um, to make the mold of, of my face for me. But come on, we're already going through cancer. Can you make this slightly more enjoyable? <laughs> I know, I know. And, <laughs> I'm sure um, you don't miss, miss those visits. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, I think. Um, Go ahead. No, no, sorry. I was just going to say, what would you say um, kind of got you through those times? Like what, where did you draw strength from um, while you were barely awake uh, for those three months and just trying to, and losing all of your body mass and uh, just not being able to engage in life? Like what, where did you draw your strength from to get it, through it's, that? It's a good question. And before I answer that, I want to uh, say, tell a bit of a story about my wife and, and her strength because uh, to be honest um you know i just i got sick and so i was out of it and you know kind of laying on the couch and my wits weren't really about me but it was really my the real story of strength in my opinion is my wife and her being able to run the family you know manage to keep our uh three and five-year-old daughters fed in school clean etc um and and deal with me taking me to my daily appointments um and her obviously having her full wits about me, not getting the luxury of being able to sleep 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, but she just well, was amazing. Um, and she also took, uh, we both took three months off work in order to, to get through this. Um, so it's it quite a journey through, through the end of the year. Um, but in terms of, of my strength, I think, you know, the way I think about it, I know some of the tonal coaches um, talk about this is, is finding your why. You know, we talk about this, this at work as well, and it really resonates with me. I think it's critical for for everybody in, in, in your activities and especially something you're going to spend a lot of time doing um, strength training or your work or in my case, um, fighting cancer. Um, you, got, you got to think of the big picture. You know, working out, it's not about just curling this, this bicep. It's about why I'm doing it and, and who I'm doing it for. And so it probably is going to sound a bit cliche. But you know my why, where where I gained strength was, as I said, from from my wife, from my kids, wanting to to stay around and and be there for them. I mean, you know, honestly, in that type of position, you know, if somebody has a a real life changing position. Everything that's important becomes immediately clear, and all of the other peripheral stuff that we probably spend most of our time worrying about, it just falls away, like immediately yeah. and you don't even and think at all about that so it's really you know as i said before just wanting to stay around and, and and be with my family longer i certainly wasn't 
ready to go. So yeah. that's that's where I, I drew strength. That's beautiful. Well, shout out to Erin if she's watching. Uh, she sounds like a real warrior. So yeah, that definitely <laughs> was. And one thing I, I forgot to mention, which I think I guess is a is a bright side now that that I've got the tonal and I'm now uh, working out, but is uh, Jackson's in, in the tonal lab last week. I remember Jackson talking about it. I can't uh, profess to know the words, but I do remember him talking about doing the four weeks of fat loss and then jumping on go big or go home. So you're training to lose fat to get a, a good body mass basis and then build muscle on top of that. Well, unbeknownst to me, my cancer fight got me to that uh, better uh, body mass level. So I was able to start uh, building some muscle on top of that. So I, I wouldn't guess, recommend that as a fat loss uh, strategy, but you know. <laughs> definitely not a recommendation. I can tell you um, it comes down to very easy. If you want to lose weight, at that point I was basically drinking three or four Ensure drinks a day and that was it. You lose weight very fast doing that, but I definitely don't recommend it. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I'm sure you can't even look at an Ensure. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Um, speaking of tonal and fitness, what was what were you, what were you doing for fitness activities before cancer? Like back in the your previous life, what was what was your fitness routine like? Sure. So probably uh, right before getting diagnosed, I wasn't to be honest, I wasn't doing much in, ter in terms of weight training. Um, years before, in my twenties and thirties, I was uh, you know I was going to the gym quite often. Uh, I would probably go to the gym four days a week. So I, I had a history in, in strength training and um, it really kind of stopped when when I had kids, to be honest, through just having other priorities and, and wanting to not take that hour or two out of my day to, to go to the gym. And you know, it was really two hours when you, at least two hours when you get down to it with a 15 to 30 minute drive to get to the gym and, and get back, which obviously you don't have when the gym's in your home. But uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it just kind of it, it dropped away and, and I kind of switched. I did some minimal cardio, but I was really focused more on diet and just not I wasn't muscular, but I also wasn't getting fat because I was just limiting my intake. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And so um, what prompted you to get a tonal once you were kind of coming out of the funk of cancer? Yeah. So it, it was, you know, I wanted to get back into strength training you know, after after having the kids and it just um didn't have an easy way to do that i guess i wasn't strongly motivated to go to the gym every day um i, I work chicago hours um based in california but work chicago hours so start early and i'm done early so i do have time to do it but honestly i was more motivated to go pick up the kids early and spend a little time with them rather than go uh go to the gym for for an hour yeah so what really motivated me was you know i was kind of physically, I was physically destroyed and just wanted to get some muscle back um, and, and get back, even thinking about where I was you know, 10, 15 years ago, wanting to get back into a bit better shape. And I, I'm, I'm a bit of a geek uh, in terms of being, you know, starting off as a software engineer and, and being in um, software my entire career. So the combining the technology aspect uh, of Tonal with the strength training, and you know what the, the the big kicker is is the footprint and i'm trying to do a commercial here for tonal but this is really the the, the things that, that made me decide because i honestly i you know where i was looking at getting a a real a, a a free weight setup and doing that in the garage but my wife's like no way we're not taking up that much room and it's ugly it can't be in the house but tonal's a perfect opportunity it does everything and it just looks like a tv on the wall mm -hmm. um and so uh, I, I mean, you know, I've had some like minor injuries where I've been not able to work out for like a month or two. Um, nothing even comparable, remotely comparable to what you've been through. And just rebuilding strength is is so hard when you take a step back or when you're coming from just like your baseline. You are coming back from such a deficit. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that was like, like what it felt like, what, how you started out? Did you jump into like, a long program, a short program. What were your daily workouts like? Just walk us through kind of the first couple of weeks. Yeah, it was it was definitely tough getting started. I mean, um, in my past life, going to a gym. If you ever did take a, a break, took a long vacation, going back after a month or you know two weeks, it's use the experience I would have is it's hard to get started. But once you get started, 
it's kind of downhill for a while because you're just picking up momentum and, and getting better exponentially faster. Um, but for me, I was definitely uncomfortable, not sure where to start. So mm -hmm. I started at uh, a beginner um, with, with Coach Natalie. And I can't remember the name of the program, perhaps Building Basics or yeah. – yeah, okay. So started with that and, and just wanted to do something, just, just getting into lifting. I mean, the, the assessment – I remember doing the assessment on the first day we got it. I'm thinking, well, wow, this is uh, got some weight behind it, and I can tell how weak, weak I am. So I definitely need to start at the basics, and and did, and it was it was a great program. And then from there, I was able to start you know moving into your intermediate, and then now getting into the the advanced programs. Yeah, I just saw on your post that you are in Go Big or Go Home. I mean, that's the hardest program on Tonal. So kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a, it was a definitely a great program, and I the first uh, two weeks I was able I was got to failure. I mean, with, without question, and um, yeah, it, it really pushed you. I kind of did uh, my progression. I, I worked with I, I did the, the the class with Natalie, which was which was perfect. It got me uh, you know back to the movements. It got my body moving, you know. And this was not only just about trying to build muscle, but it was just really building confidence from, from a baseline of just feeling so, so tired. And so, I mean, I was still, um, I, I got the tonal in uh, mid-February. It was, it was on the, probably the, the third week of February. Um, right. and I, yeah, it was perfect. I mean, looking back, not knowing that we were walking into a global pandemic, timed it perfectly. <laughs> Buy low, sell high, right? Um, so, yeah, timed it absolutely perfectly, um, but it was it allowed me to gain some confidence, get back in, get my body moving again. And, and what I was going to say is, you know, I just got really got off um, all of my drugs the first week of January. Wow. So I remember on New Year's, I was still going through, even though I weaned off these drugs, I was going through withdrawals the first couple days of January. And so this is, you know, just about six weeks later where I'm eating again because it I really wasn't eating until... December. Um, sadly, uh, Olive Garden became our best friend, so I could get some soft pastas and eat, eat that. Um, but yeah, so starting in, in February, sorry. Just adds insult to injury. Yeah, I know. I know. Pasta is, is yeah. Uh, I would, can't, wouldn't say I enjoyed it. However, I didn't really taste that much anyway, so it, uh, it worked fine. Um, but no, as I was saying, so. So got through the, the basic program with Natalie and, and work out. It, it was great, built some confidence. And so then I moved on to, I did two programs um, with Coach Paul. Um, I remember the one, the, the house that Paul built. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the, the name of the other, but during the second one, I, I kind of pulled something on my quad mm -hmm. doing the uh, goblet squats. So did that and I took a break. I can't remember when this was, it's was probably uh, March, April timeframe but took a break for um, probably three weeks and just was doing upper body individual workouts. Mm -hmm. And that's where you know, I did some workouts from Jackson, did some workouts from Paul. And that's doing those is where I, once I started to feel better, got the, the strength, the confidence to, to do the go big or go home. That's amazing. And yeah, that was a great one. Now I'm doing uh, Coach Nicolette's program, the Raising the Barbell, so. Ooh, okay, we've got that confidence back for sure yeah, then. <laughs> that's good, yeah. It's, uh, so I, as I think she's the one that, that I go to to get my uh, daily daily beatings now. <laughs> <laughs> She'll do that to you for sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. Were you, um, were you super sore like when you were first getting back into it or how were your energy levels? What was that like? Yeah, I definitely was. I mean, I certainly didn't have the energy that, uh, you know, I had previously. That's probably partially from, from getting old, partially from, uh, or older, um, partially from, from the treatments. But, uh, yeah, I didn't have the energy. But, it, it, you know, as I was saying before, going back to the gym after a while, it, it feels like it's coming back. It's coming back you know, re reasonably quickly. It's still a, a challenge some days to, as I'm sure everybody has, to, to just get the energy and, and want to work out. But, what I think the, you know, it's, it's addictive. I would say that um, with tonal, I'm more consistent. And that's probably the secret to, I think, the improvement that I feel that, that I've made. And that I, I mean, it's not just about, for me, it, it's not about it partially, but not mostly about what it looks like in the mirror, you know, what you look like. It's really about 
the confidence that how you feel inside and, and the consistency drives that. And I think, um, you know, with, with tonal, I feel great. I feel stronger. I feel good. And that's really what is the addictive part that, and of course the, uh, the metrics. So you can look at your strength score, you can see how it's going up and yeah, it, it's, you get excited about it. Like every time I finish a workout, I always want to go look, all right, how do they, how do you judge this workout? If I've worked really hard, I remember the, uh, I think the second day of, uh, uh, raising the barbell. Uh, yeah, this was, it was uh, leg day, first leg day. Woo. And yeah, I did that. And I was really pushing hard. But then I went and looked at my strength score and it went down. Like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> That's just because you did some new moves at yeah. a low weight relative to the others, but it'll go back up. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, I, I was bummed to see it go down, but at the same time, I felt good that I really pushed myself and had a great workout. So got okay. over Quickly. It's so funny. I'm about an hour away from from uh, the closest tonal that I know of that I have access oh. to right now. It's driving me crazy. But okay. you know, I, I could do free weights around here. I could go for a run. But I'm like, honestly, does it even count if it's not like recorded and total? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. If it doesn't. If it doesn't get measured. It doesn't get done. Yeah, I drove an hour today to, to go use it and came back. <laughs> So I totally understand. Um, yeah. So what's your what's your fitness routine like today? You're doing raising the barbell three times a week. I am. Yep. Okay. Cool. And I've actually tried to. Uh, I did uh, the first week in in three days, just trying to to push through it, and then I, I'm on the second day off, and I'm going to start back second week tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so you're kind of fast tracking it a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, just because it I haven't felt tired, or you know, I, I hadn't had. Muscle. I do actually. Um, yesterday, my uh, my back was was sore. So <laughs> glad of taking. Uh, I was only going to take one day off, but taking two days off to to give some rest. Um, but go ahead. No, what I was going to say is, you know, despite the difficulty that we're all facing with with the COVID restrictions right now, it's one thing that's fantastic to have mm -hmm. um, my office in the house, to have the tonal in the house. So it's very easy to get up. And as I was saying, I, I work. Um, early hours. So usually I'm starting at six in the morning. So I can usually, I'm usually able to easily take a break around 11 when Europe's off and, uh, and Chicago is, is on lunch or early afternoon and go get a, a workout in on tonal and then have lunch and come back for the afternoon. Is, whereas if I was back in the office, no chance I'd be able to do that. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It just must be so nice that you can walk over to it. And I imagine you're being very careful with COVID right now with maybe your immune system is a little bit compromised from the recovery. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, I'm really glad that you're not leaving the house and going to gym. And yeah, safe. I know it's feel like, um, well, gyms are just the perfect breeding ground to, uh, to, you know, to transmit this disease because it lives very well on metal and with free weights, what do you constantly touch? <laughs> I don't even know that. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, with, with the tonal, it's just, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, a bodybuilder, so I'm not sure there's really a reason to uh, to go back to a gym. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so you said you connected really well with uh, some some certain coaches, like you said, Paul and Jackson. Or are there any other specific coaches or programs that you really love or that you'd recommend to others? Um, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to say. I, I in terms of recommendation, every every class that I've done so far, I've really liked, and it's been perfect okay. for for what I was doing. And all the coaches have uh, been great and enjoyed taking the uh, taking the classes from them. So certainly the the four Natalie, Paul, Jackson, and Nicolette that that, that I've taken programs from so far, I'd certainly highly recommend. Good. I recommend their programs. I kind of look at the I was looking at the programs in terms of what to choose. I'm looking at the you know the obviously the the category of, of building muscle but then looking at what um the level of course but also the the muscles that are being worked and trying to get a whole body workout focused largely on chest and chest and arms wanting to get a good workout there go bigger go home is perfect for that yeah exactly exactly that's a good and are you noticing some size and some bulk coming back yeah i definitely am and you know having uh yeah w without question i am and with with uh having lost the weight, I'm getting, I'm seeing now more definition than I've ever seen before. Cause you know, I didn't realize it, but I was, I wasn't even 20 pounds heavier than I am now. So I'm about 170 okay. um, at this point. So I put some weight back on, right. um, which is a good thing. But uh, 
yeah, even 20 pounds heavier than this. I would never say I was I was fat, but right. you certainly didn't see the the definition that I'm able to see now. I can turning the right way, I can see some abs, which is <laughs> it's it's most of it fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's Love really that, that's incredibly encouraging to see for sure. <laughs> Well, now you're going to need all new clothes. So you had to get the cancer clothes and now you're going to need <laughs> shirts for all your new muscles. <laughs> there you go. You get all tight shirts. Um, would, do you have any advice for people in our community who might be battling cancer themselves or maybe a loved one is battling cancer or something similar that's just consuming their mind, body and soul and, you know, they may be in like a dark place and yeah, what would you say to those people having been there yourself? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. First of all, I would say that anybody that's in that situation, reach out to me on Facebook. Happy to uh, happy to talk to you, tell you more about my story, hear about yours, and uh, you know, give you some specific advice. Certainly, would love to help anybody that that, that they think I could help them. Um, in terms of general advice, I think you know coming back to to my why I think is 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 being present. You know there there's stresses and obviously going through something as traumatic as as either being a caregiver for for a loved one with 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 a terrible disease or having it yourself. It's incredibly stressful, incredibly difficult to to go through that journey. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's being with family. I think a large piece of it is being being present being with the person as much as you can and putting the the stress aside you know I, I, it sounds easy to say but I know it's incredibly difficult um, I think that's one thing and I know that during this journey if my wife was on the call if my wife is listening right now I'm sure she's laughing because there's times that I wasn't putting the stress aside or being um in pain or whatever it was and, and probably not the nicest person i you know i, I could have been during that journey but i said she, she certainly held it together um so there's that piece i guess the the other piece of advice i would give if you are a, a caregiver or if you're going through a fight and you have the energy i'd say take the time to to do something for yourself and, and don't feel guilty about that you know if it's working out on tonal great if it's going for a walk just doing something to, to keep your mind right, getting away, being able to get lost in your own thoughts. It's very therapeutic for me just you know, to go to go for a walk with, with my dog. I don't listen to music. I'm just able to think and you know, nobody to ask me questions or talk to me. And it just helps, I think, especially when you're going through something so difficult like that, just to process, um, process what's going on and, and, and think about where you are and, and what's next. That's great advice. Um, Coach Nicolette says hello. Nicolette, you didn't hear uh, Jerome just talking about how you beat him up every day. This nice man, and you're hurting him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christy Feist says, so happy to hear you are in remission. Stay strong and stay healthy. My dad passed away from cancer when I was a baby. I have a big soft spot in my heart for cancer survivors. Keep fighting. No, oh, thank you very much, and sorry to hear about your dad. We have a really amazing community, and so I really appreciate you sharing your story with us and sharing some some words of wisdom, um, having been through it yourself. Um, what would what does it mean for you, Jerome, to be your strongest? That's a good question, um, and kind of touched on it a little bit, but I guess you know I, I'm not in terms of what my goals are. Uh, I kind of think about you know the why, why I'm doing it, why I'm doing tonal, but um, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. So being my strongest isn't about um, getting huge necessarily. Um, it's not about trying to displace one of the coaches on tonal and be a fitness trainer. It's um, <laughs> Watch you know, out, <laughs> <laughs> but I, being my strongest is more about, um, you know, the mindset, how you feel, your confidence, you know, certainly there's the, the aesthetic aspect of it and living in San Diego, I certainly want the confidence to be able to take my shirt off at the beach, which is a benefit, but it's not all about that. It's all about feeling good in whatever you're wearing and, and, and having that confidence. You know, there's the, the aspect being 45 and having young kids. I want to be able to keep up with my kids, being able to uh, carry my, my two daughters who are now 45 and 65 pounds. So, getting up there so i know my time is limited but i want to be able to do it as long as i can and 
it's again, it's just it's just about that feeling, about the mindset that that, that makes me feel the strongest. I love that. Uh, that's great. These kiddos are very lucky to have you as their dad. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Linda said, "Fellow cancer survivor here, be well, Jerome." Linda, you're so kind. Um, Thank you, Linda. You too. <laughs> Christy said, Nicolette said, all movement is valuable when you're talking about going for walks. And Christy said, even push-ups. And honestly, Christy, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions, we've got Jerome for a few minutes. Um, you can also leave some questions in the comments. And I'm sure he'd be happy to, to chat in the comments. Or like he said, you can send him a message if you have specific questions, want to hear more, or um, just maybe need a little extra support. And you know this community is always there for you if you need some support. So please reach out if you're going through something. We are there for you. We want to help you be your strongest. Um, your success is our success. And so we are here for you. Um, Jerome, anything else that we didn't cover that you wanted to you wanted to touch on? Or did we did we get to it? I think we got to it. I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to get out. Perfect. Um, well, that's great because I am losing all light. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jerome, thank you so much for, for being here, for spending your time with us. Your time is very valuable. You've got a family, you've got a very cute dog, um, and you chose to hang out with us in the community, and we appreciate that. And so um, just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of the community, on behalf of Tonal. Um, be well, my friend. Stay, Keep staying strong. Awesome. Thank you, Kay. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for all that, that watched. We are rooting for you, so keep sharing your progress with us. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have you on again. We'll have you come into the office someday, whenever we're all That'd back. Be great. Here. <laughs> yeah, stay right. safe. Uh, give Erin a big hug for us all after this. She's she's a trooper too. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome, and thank you everyone for watching. I will be back next week for a tonal lab with the, our head of software, David Azaria, and he's got some very fun and exciting announcements for you. So stay tuned next week 5 p.m on wednesday for our next tonal lab thanks again jerome good Thank night you. bye bye